M to M Circuits, Jesse Lee. You guys hear me? My name is Jesse Lee, and I'm the CEO of M2M Circuits, and we are really excited to be here. I, I'm excited to get to share this part of our journey with you uh, guys and, and, uh, and show you what we've been doing. Uh, again, my name is Jesse Lee. I'm a cybersecurity guy by trade. My business partner, Don, is a, um, is a uh, hardware ninja, is what I call him. Um, but uh, this, this story started out with me really in 2013, at the beginning of 2014. And I wanted, all I wanted to do was help my father-in-law out. He drives about 60 miles a day out in West Texas trying to check wells on his farm. And all he wants to do is text his equipment and turn the thing on and off. That's all he wants to do. And he wants to save that gas. And what started out as a, like a three-week project turned into a massive Massive 10 month effort, including consulting with Verizon Solution Architects on trying to get these electronics on the internet. And so, what I found out was there is no easy way that's affordable to connect existing boonie industrial equipment to the internet. And you say, Jesse, what in the world is boonie industrial equipment? Well, boonie industrial equipment is industrial equipment that's out in the boonies. Um, hopefully, you'll remember it because the equipment is spelled wrong in our slide deck. So, what did I do? I made a desperate plea. I went to the makerspace conventions, and if, if you're familiar in the space, makerspaces are, are where people get together and they share ideas and they say, hey, have you tried this? And I went to a makerspace convention and I said, please help me. What am I missing here? Is, am I missing anything? And I met Don, and Don thought I was a nut. And he said, hey, look, I do this for a living, and if your story checks out with the Verizon Solution Architects, we'll create a company and we'll fix this. And so, we built MTM Circuits. 2015, Jesse and Don got together and we worked like a dog. And what we did was, um, I basically went to Don and said, Don, these are all the problems that I encountered when I was trying to prototype this device. And this is, this is kind of what I need and what I want to help my father-in-law out. And so we came up with the first ever 4G M3. And so we've got one here tonight if anybody wants to check it out later on. Very excited to present this uh, to the world. And you ask me, well, okay, what are these features that are so great about the M3? Well, it's operable on uh, the uh, USA's largest 4G networks, networks with a capital S. And the reason that's a capital S is because you don't have to buy a specific hardware device that's on a specific network. If you've gone and gotten an iPhone, you have to buy a Verizon iPhone. Or you have to buy an at and iPhone or a Sprint iPhone, right? This one, you can flip a SIM card over and you can be on either an AT&T or a Verizon network. It'll work with T-Mobile. Uh, we haven't tried it with Sprint, but these are the networks that it works with. It's only the flip of a, of a SIM card. Uh, it maximizes connectivity through 4G. Why is that important? The important reason is, is because networks are not investing in 2G anymore. It's sunsetting, 2017. 3G, it's stable, but where it's going is 4G. That's where 4G is. If you've been out in the boonies, you probably don't get data equipment or data uh, connections, but you might be able to get a, a, uh, a text message through. What's neat about this product also is that it has fallback to 3G on AT&T's networks. It supports both SMS and data. SMS is extremely important because uh, it applies to both the data costs. If you want a cheap, cheap plan, you want to go with the text plan. If you want to do some data or if you want to do high-speed data, this device will support that also. It's got an internal antenna system. External antennas can be used also. It's got a two-wire serial TTL. It can connect things to the internet. This is very, very unique. Uh, we don't know of any other device out there that's like that. It has an open source API that we've uh, uh, handed out to the world to use, and we've uh, had UTD actually develop some on it. Um, and it's capable of expanding to international networks. Now, why is this important? Because the Internet of Things is here, and it's huge. There's going to be about 14.4 billion things connect to the Internet by the year 2020. Six trillion will be, sold on, uh, will be spent on solutions. Uh, Ericsson estimates that 10% of all of these 
will be connected through cellular. That means 1.4 billion devices will be connected by 2021. That's insane. That's insane. The markets that we're targeting, these are the markets we're targeting, oil and gas and agriculture, obviously, for my father-in-law. That's all I got. Thank you. Ooh. That was a good one. Hey, does your, is your father-in-law on it? Is he using it now? Uh, he is not using it. I can explain later if you, if you want to know why he's not using it, but uh, that's where we're at. I like the fact that you spoke about AT&T as the largest provider for IoT. Um, the question is, is have you uh, evaluated the 5G network, which is where we're shifting to in architecture and satellites? So we, we have not formally evaluated 5G. Uh, we are hearing the buzz there, and we are hearing that it is going there. But here's the important thing about that. Um, 5G, all the technologies right now, they're moving to this. It's, it's really advanced GSM technologies. LTE is the GM, GSM standard. 5G will be based on that as well. Um, what our goal is right now is to provide for the most devices that are out there right now with the most equipment. So we want to leverage the big networks and what they have right now. And then future iterations will look at going 5G when that comes online. But right now, we need 4G on the networks. These devices are they're just not connected at all. So why isn't your father-in-law using it yet? So why is my father-in-law? This is and this is important. If 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 I got into it, it costs about a hundred thousand dollars to get one of these devices here on the on, on the networks in the USA. It's insane. Um, when I went down this path originally, uh, you know, I was so excited about getting something on. But the fact is, is that in America, we demand a high quality of service. And so while Europe, the European markets, they can put anything on. I mean, the reason I started this was because a a, a guy out of Greece put a, a small microcontroller on the internet and his, his father-in-law was doing it right away. That was in 2013. Right now, um, if you want to put something on the networks, uh, you have to go through very expensive certification processes. Vi Verizon's about 42,000, AT&T's about 35,000. That's if you make it the first time. If you want any type of pre-certification, you have to spend those costs as well. So. So the, so the long answer is, we don't have the device certified. That's where we're at. We're actually in a state right now where we are in need of seed funding to get the device certified so that we can pr actually sell this product legitimately on, in the USA's networks. That's where we're at. What are the costs after that for, for the device? It, var it, it varies. Right now, MSRP is at $200 per device. Um, if you look at what's out there that provides 4G right now, you're looking at about a $350 device that's without antennas. So if you go buy antennas, you're looking at another uh, anywhere from $12 to $45, to, depending on where you get those from. So if you're looking at a solution right now, it won't connect all of the things that we are trying to connect. It, it requires an Ethernet cable, which, you know, Boonie equipment doesn't have Ethernet. These, these things were developed, you know, 10 to 15 years ago. Um, so th that, that stuff isn't connectable, and it's expensive. So there, if you look at it, it's about double the cost of where we're at right now. Yeah, so my question was going to be about pricing, but since you answered that, uh, in addition to the initial board costs, would an end user installing this have any ongoing costs to you? Uh, no, not any on ongoing costs to me unless they did a resell, or unless we resold the data plans. So you're always going to have a data plan, and i, I got to be honest with you, the, the networks right now, they're in their infancy on IoT. They're behind. They are rapidly trying to catch up. They... They, their platforms of managing these IoT devices, they're just barely coming online. It has been a nightmare trying to manage uh, data on, on these devices. It's not like our cell phones. Our cell phones, they have it down pretty packed. You can go look at your data and things like that. Right now, it's very, very difficult to, to, do, to do this kind of thing. AT&T, in my opinion, seems to be uh, a little bit ahead of where Verizon is. Um, but the ongoing costs, it, it would be a, a, basically a data plan. A machine, it's a specific data plan. It's called a machine-to-machine -machine data plan. Yes, ma'am. So my question is on go to market once you've gone through the certification process, but, but more specifically, how to take the cost that you currently have and reduce it because the margins for the people that could actually use the, the, what you're mm -hmm. selling most specifically don't always have the money to be able to support that type of technology, but it could help them leaps and bounds. So go to market and then reducing costs. So you're absolutely right. Um, the, here's what's interesting about that. So the, the products that are out there, so the, the device that I, that I wanted to build for my father-in-law, I was trying to keep it under a $500 cost total. 
right? And that, that includes the cost of this modem. But the devices that are out there right now, you're looking at, this is without installation, you're looking at about a grand. All right, so we cut that in half. Um, go to market where we're, what, we're, what our plan is, uh, is we've, we're targeting specific um, uh, people in the automation industry. And, and we hope to partner with those automation industry folks to go to market with this. We're also looking, uh, once we get certified, Verizon will post this as a product that can be sold on their website. Thank you very much. Good job.